Hello everybody, it's Von Rich here with my Bob Bradley Lucky Kitty shirt doing my top 10 1981. Not necessarily the best, but these are my favorites. And the reason I'm not gonna call it the best anymore is because in the 80s there are certain albums I do not have. This year uh, you got Ringo Starr, Stop and Smell the Roses. Nah, I'm just kidding. I mean, you got Faith by The Cure, and you got Dare by Human League, which I think if I had those on vinyl, they would probably be in my top 10, maybe. So I'm just, from now on, they're going to be top 10, but they're my favorite. Number 10 is Rocky Erickson and the Aliens, the evil one. Fantastic album. It's a... Straight rock and roll record, actually. I believe it might have been recorded a couple of years before this. Um, I think it was recorded right after he got out of a mental hospital. Rocky Erickson, as we know, was in the 13th floor elevators. And what's so cool about this is there's no electric jug. Number nine, Rick James. Street, what is it? Street Songs. Fantastic, man. You got Give It To Me Baby, Super Freak. Just one funky song after another, man. It's just great. Below the Funk, Past the J. Number nine. Number eight. A favorite of mine. This is The Cramps, Psychedelic Jungle. Their second album. I don't think it's quite as good as the first, but it does have some great songs on it. And one is the Goo Goo Muck. And I guess right now Goo Goo Muck is blowing up because it was on that HBO show Wednesdays or Wednesday. But yeah, and I I found out, you know, the guy that wrote Goo Goo Muck is from Bakersfield. Yeah. Number seven, Gun Club. Great LA punk band. They they incorporated blues, country. It's just fantastic, man. The first few ba uh, albums by this band were just fantastic. Gun Club, dude. And Keith Morris from the Circle Jerks is the one that gave... Uh, Gave him the name. I guess he was a uh, roommates with uh, what's his name, Jeffrey Lee Pierce. Number seven. Number six. Adolescence. I had to rethink it in my mind. Number six. Fantastic debut punk band by a bunch of. Teenagers. Just one great song after another. Starts off with I Hate Children and ends with Creatures and everything in between is fantastic. Has Amoeba on it. Fantastic s song that they used to play on uh, K-Rock all the time. Number five. Making a left turn here. And it's Venom. Welcome to Hell. Yeah, fantastic metal band. Just really uh, raw metal. I love this album, man. I did not know it. I, I mean, I seen it, but I didn't never listen to it back in the day because I wasn't really into metal that much. But yeah, fantastic stuff. Number four. Another L.A. band. It's Wall of Voodoo. Their second release. It's their first full length. And it's Dark Continent. There were two songs that they played on K-Rock off of this. Back in Flesh and Red Light. But again, I don't think this has a bad song on it, man. Just fantastic. And there's a shot of the band. Yeah, I love Stan Ridgway, dude. Number three. From London, I believe. I know they're English. Susie and the Banshees. This is the U.S. version. The first, I don't know how many... Uh, and the U.S. had a, 
It said free single. I, I think it was Israel right here. And then subsequently, they just put a <laughs> black bar there, which is kind of weird. I think it was on Polydor in the UK. In the US, it was PBC Records. Just a fantastic band. Now, in the 70s, I had them. I may have had them rated number one in one year. And I was talking on about Susie, Susie Sue, and I kind of neglected the band. They're a fantastic band. And the fact the guitar playing on this is just, uh, it's top notch. Very uh, influential, I believe. The drumming and bass, the just a great band. And uh, yeah, fantastic. Number two, got another English band and it's Psychedelic Furs with talk, talk, talk. Starts off with Pretty in Pink. This is actually a different version than what's in the movie, Pretty in Pink. They re-recorded it for that album or that movie. But yeah, this one doesn't have any bad songs either. Dumb Waiters, I love that one. She Is Mine, ending uh, side one. Side two starts off into you like a train, just, man, just blasting. Fantastic album. And my number one album from 1981 is Black Flag Damaged, L.A. Band. This is uh, with Henry Rollins. This was probably uh, the, the album I listened to the most in 81. This was like their third attempt at this. It was their fourth singer. Their first singer, Keith Morris, left and started uh, Circle Jerks. Second singer, Ron Reyes. They were recording some of these songs they, they recorded. And uh, he just left. At, I think it was at the Fleetwood in the middle of a gig and just quit the band in the middle of a gig. And they released uh, Jealous Again, the 12-inch EP from those recordings. And then uh, Des Kadia joined the band. And uh, he was a singer. And they, they recorded quite a bit of uh, damage material with him. In fact, there's a bootleg out now that's uh, damaged with Des. And it's really good. But uh, he he his throat couldn't handle it anymore. And... When they were back east, I guess they asked uh, Henry if he wanted to come with them and join the band, and he did. Fantastic album. Number one, 1981. Take care, everybody.